Today we're talking about the disappearing four patch block and the disappearing nine patch block and some of the variations to those two blocks. I have here a quilt that is kind of was kind of my inspiration. I was fascinated with how it was put together. So this gave me an opportunity to do some of that and to share that with you. Okay, let's jump right in. Here on the table, I have a disappearing four patch quilt that I bought in a thrift store. And this was kind of my inspiration for looking into what the four patch, disappearing four patch is, how it's put together. And when I was looking into understanding this particular block, that kind of led me into the disappearing nine patch. So today we're gonna to talk about some of those variations. Let's start with the disappearing four patch. I started with five inch blocks when I was working on the four patch. So the, in the disappearing four patch, it's relatively simple in that you want two blocks on opposite corners that have a high contrast. And that will give you some of the um, features that you see in the, the disappearing four patch when you're putting those blocks into a quilt. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the variations that you can do to that. One of the comments that I've gotten in one of the previous videos was a comment about the high cost of quilting as a hobby and how it can be very expensive. And I totally agree that if you try to purchase all of the tools and all the special specialty things that go with quilting that are on the market, it definitely can become a very expensive hobby. So in my videos going forward, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the tools that I happen to have that I have accumulated over the years, which I'm sure I have way more than I needed. Um, but I'll also talk about how that same technique can be done maybe without the tool. So um, in this particular disappearing four patch, this square starts with five inch blocks and it fits on a rotating mat. So with the rotating mat, and again, it's not required, um, a little bit trickier to get it cut, but you do not need the mat if, if you don't have one. So I've, I have created this four patch block. And in my case, because I was experimenting with different um, techniques, I did press my seams open. It's not something I usually do because um, I feel like the, the seams might not be as strong when they're done that way. But I didn't want to have any issues when I started cutting this apart. So with the disappearing four patch we start with five inch blocks we are using just two fabrics that are high contrast doesn't really matter what colors they are you use the colors that work for you in the case of this quilt they have used four different block com color combinations and then they have quilted those in with a uh, like a stair step pattern so in this case, the thing that is um, common among these four is that there is a good contrast between the two colors. Okay, so with that being said, we take the four, the four patch block, we measure one inch out from the center line. So I hold my ruler and I do that. And then without shifting anything, I move my roller over to the one inch mark on this side, keep good pressure and cut that. And then if you do have the rotating mat, you can rotate. If you don't, um, as long as you strategically pl place your cutting mat, then you can move yourself around the block without moving it. Um, it's just a little trickier. So the mat's nice, but it's not, not a requirement for this particular block. So I'm doing again, one inch from the center block, turning this around. You do have to hold firmly to the, the um, ruler because the ruler is laying on seams, which is creating a bit of bulk and it's making the ruler want to slide. Even though I have put uh, medical tape on the bottom of my rulers to prevent sliding because we're on these seams, it still wants to slide. So um, 
I recommend that you, you put good pressure and that you walk your hand so that you can keep that pressure all the way. Okay, so we have at this point, we have cut one inch from this line all the way across and then one inch from that line across that way. And if you pull these now, you can see that we have separate pieces here. Okay, so from this, this is where we begin to make some changes to create the disappearing four patch as you see here. So one of the things that we do is we switch these and we switch those okay and we spin this and let me see we spin the we don't spin this okay so this is the block that they've used in here so this is the traditional disappearing four patch and the next step is to treat this as nine pieces and stitch those together so you would take this piece flip it over, stitch it, take this one, stitch it, and then when you had your three rows stitched, you would stitch all of those together. And at that point, you would have, what did I do with it? Oh. At that point, you would end up with this block. So this is a disappearing four patch with two colors. Um, and then from this one, this was cut one inch from the center line. I also did one of the blocks cutting it two inches from the center line. And this was, so this just shows you that changing the distance from the center line that you're cutting totally changes the look of the block. And this one was, I believe, two and a half inches or three inches from the center line. So you can see you, you kind of get distorted as far as the, the look of a disappearing four patch when you start changing the width from the center line that you cut. This is a disappearing four patch, but this block is cut on the diagonal. And so by cutting it on the diagonal, you get a totally different block than the traditional four patch block. Okay, so a total different look. And you'll notice that the blocks, even though both of them started with a five inch uh, four square block, they are different sizes now because the way that they're cut requires that you trim this one down more than we trim this one. Okay, so let's talk about how we put this block together. So we started with a four, four patch. These are five inch squares. And what we did was we measured I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I took a ruler and measured two inches from the corner. So I put my ruler on there, two inches, and I made a mark. And then from this corner, we measured two inches and we made a mark. And then from this corner, so all the way around, measured two inches from all, from each corner. So we have a mark here, 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 we have a mark here, we have a mark here, okay? So we have a mark all the way around. So in this block, the way we get this, this, um, this look is that we cut this block diagonally, not straight. So we put our ruler, I'm confused with that. We put our ruler on the two inch mark at this end and the two inch mark here. And again, we try to do this without shifting or moving the block. So we do this. Okay. And then we gently move the ruler over here and we do the same thing with this two inch mark. And again, variations. You can definitely cut your blocks a different size. You can start with six inch blocks, eight inch blocks, seven inch blocks, two inch block, you know, maybe not two inch blocks, but you can definitely do different sized blocks um, and change the distance from the corners that you're going to get different looks. So again, I'm matching this up. So I'm looking at my two inch mark here and my two inch mark there and holding lots of pressure, okay. And then one more cut with the two inch block on that corner and the two inch 
uh, the two inch mark on that corner and the two inch mark on this corner. Okay, so now we have cut this block apart like this. So it's the same disappearing four patch, only it's cut at a diagonal. So once you've got this cut at a diagonal, now you are changing your blocks. And this is the way that I'm changing these blocks based on um, a pattern that I, I found on the internet. But you can change these blocks in any way that you like. You can shift these, you can turn these and get, you know, if you turn that this way, then you get an arrow shape. And by turning them in different ways, you get different looks. And then when you take these blocks and you sew them together and you sew them into a quilt, then you, you continue to have the ability to come up with different layouts. So we change these to this configuration and then we sew these three pieces together, these three pieces together, these three pieces, and then once we have them, we sew them together. So what happens with this block is when you sew this piece to that, you can see that it sticks out farther than that block. So you line up this end, so you have a row when you're done, you stitch this on, and then you lay this one over here, and you stitch that side on, okay? And then when you've done that, then you can stitch your rows together. And what you end up with is a block that looks like this. And you can see that in this block, this sticks out on the end, so it's not square. So you have to take this block and square it up. So let me pull these aside, put this on here. And this is where I ended up using a square ruler to square up this block, okay? So this particular ruler is eight and a half inches, but the way that we've cut this, we're going to have to cut this block down. And I believe on here, we cut this block down to seven and a half inches. So because we used five inch blocks and we measured over two inches, we end up with seven inch blocks. So I will line up my, um, my center lines, putting it on the three and three quarter mark, putting that center seam on the three and three quarter mark, and putting this seam on the three and three quarter mark. Okay, so I line those up and I trim two sides. Okay, okay, once I have that trimmed off, And you have to make sure you're giving enough pressure when you're going over the seams. So then I can flip this around and I can, now I can do the same thing, put it on the three and three quarter mark on both sides. Now I know that I've already trimmed these two sides so I should be able to line those up on the seven and a half inch mark. And that should make this line up to three and three quarters and this line up to three and three quarters. And then I make the pressure and trim that away, okay? So now we have another one of these blocks. And this is where you can start to see that just by turning that block, that changes the way that these match up so one block to the next would change the look of your quilt. If you turned your block this way, then that matches up in a different way and gives you a different look. So this is kind of how you know that there are, ver there are tons of options on what you want your quilt to look like when you start lining these up and having multiple ones. Now I have one other variation to this four patch that I thought was fascinating. Um, and a little bit, a little bit more um, tricky or a little bit more um, interesting, maybe. Um, this is a disappearing four patch using half square triangles. So the half square triangles give you the opportunity to end up with something much different than the other blocks that we looked at. Now this block starts with 
eight inch blocks. So we started with contrasting fabrics, eight inch blocks. We put those eight inch blocks right sides together. And this is another instance where um, there are tools, but you don't have to have fancy tools. So in this case, we start with two eight inch blocks. We lay these blocks facing each other, right sides together, okay? So we've just got them right sides together. We match them up. What I did for this block is I had another gadget. You don't have to have this. You definitely can, I'll, I'll walk you through another way to do this. But I matched up my white, my yellow line on each corner. And then I took a friction pin, which is a pin that will disappear with heat. And I marked this line. This particular ruler is half inch and the line in the middle is a quarter inch. So if you line up the yellow line on each end, then you will end up with quarter inch seam allowances. So in this case, I took the friction pin and I marked down the edge of this side and I marked down the edge of that side. Um, I would take this block and pin it to hold this in place and then I would stitch on the line on each of these stitch lines. Let's see if I have one. Here's one where I have pinned it together so that these could be stitched. Let's see if I have one. I don't think I have one where I actually stitched it. Okay, so if you didn't have that ruler and you wanted to, to do the same thing, another option would be, and I'll do it on the other side of this one, would be to take any straight ruler that you have, line it up on the corners. Use your friction pin to mark your line. Okay, so in this case, without that tool, we are we are making our line directly from one corner to the other corner. We are marking on that line. And then I would do the same thing in that I would pin this so it wouldn't shift, but when I got to the sewing machine, instead of stitching on the line that I had drawn, I would stitch a quarter inch on one side of the line all the way down and a quarter inch on the other side of the line and you would end up with the same thing. You just wouldn't have had this, this particular little ruler to do it with. So in this case, in this case, we are marking corner to corner and we're actually marking the stitching line and then when we iron these, when we're done and we iron these open, then um, the stitching line will go away with the iron. In this case, we are marking, not with this ruler, we are marking from corner to corner on the line and then we're stitching on either side. So once you've taken them to the sewing machine and you've stitched on the line, or in this case, you've stitched a quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on this side, and you've, you've cut them apart and pressed them, then you can sew them together in this configuration. So um, this is the configuration that will give you the finished block that I originally showed you. What we did was we created these four half square triangles and then we sewed these four half square triangles together. And then once we were done with that, we took our ruler and in my case, I measured out two and a quarter inches from the center and I trimmed it on all four sides, just like we did with the disappearing four patch, but two and a quarter inches instead of one inch. Okay, so take my ruler, firm pressure, two and a quarter inches in that direction, turn it around. And this time I'm not using my rotating mat because my mat isn't big enough for this block. When you're sewing eight inch squares together, you end up with a much larger block. So this quilt would go together a lot quicker. If you were trying to um, put together a quilt that looked uh, really complicated, but that really was a, a disappearing four patch kind of methodology, then this would be a block you would want to consider. So and this is what I mean by if you don't have the rotating mat, you can still definitely do it, but you want, you will be, it'll be a little trickier to get your 
cutter to cut. So this time I need to cut across here. I'm kind of being careful so that it doesn't shift. And then two and a quarter inches from this direction. Okay, now this is where it gets tricky and where some folks would be nervous about um, cutting myself with the ruler. So this is where I'm going to cut in that direction. Okay, so now we have multiple squares here. I'll have to play with that a little bit. Okay, and then from here we start moving our blocks around to create this final block. So in this case, this way, we take all four corners and we turn them out. So that's the first step. Okay. And then we take these middle pieces and we turn them in. And there's a, a many different ways that you can do this. And then we take this block and we turn it one turn. So that is what gives you this block. And you can kind of see the, the star in the middle. Okay, so that's how we got that block. Now, there's a gazillion ways, maybe not gazillion, that's not very scientific. There are lots of ways to do this and that you can play with the configuration that you want. Lay these out so the overhead camera can see them. And you can line them up like this so you can start to see the pattern and this one is a bit smaller but we'll put it up here for for the look so you can kind of see how that would turn out okay so you can see that there's a secondary pattern that starts to emerge so that's a whole different configuration just by changing the direction of two blocks talk a little bit about the nine patch blocks. So the nine patch, I started with five inch blocks. And then from the five inch blocks, I played a little bit of, with the options. So this block is a really cool design. Let's put it out here so you can see it. Okay, so this block is one option and it's quite an interesting configuration. So in this case, once you have created your nine patch, so you've taken your nine um, five inch blocks and you've sewn them together to create your nine patch, you've got light colored blocks here and then you've got nine, uh, you've got the five dark blocks there. Once you've done that, then you're taking your ruler and you are trimming this, um, this block in half both horizontally and vertically. You started with a five inch block, you sewed those together, so now you have a four and a half inch block. Half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So in this case, I cut two and a quarter inches from the center, and actually I used the, the line of the block to get that center, and I cut two and a quarter inches down the middle, and then lined it up again two and a quarter inches on the block here and cut that and now I have four sub pieces. Okay and this block is just an example of one of the configurations that you can create with that block. Okay and orient that this way and that's all we did. We flipped two of the blocks and got another view. And then you can see when you start lining them up next to each other, you even, you start to create um, secondary patterns from that, depending on how you, how you line them up. You line them up this way, you're getting more of a T, um, but you're getting a stair step, you know, on your quilt when you start putting all of your blocks together. You do it this way, you get a different look. So there are options. Now this, in this case, this block was the four dark pieces in the outer corners and then the same dark piece in the middle. So that's what gave you this particular configuration. In this case, we created, we have a different kind of block in that we have 
four matching blocks here, but we have a different darker block here and then these lighter ones. So we've taken that and again from this line over two and a quarter we've cut straight down and then from this line over two and a quarter and all we're doing is cutting it equally in both directions. So once we've done that because we've got a, a third fabric here then we've got other options for what this can look like. So this can be turned in this direction and sewn together. Um, they can all be turned in the same direction and sewn together. You just have many, many, many options with this. They can be turned so that the whole, so that these corner squares now be, make a big square in the middle. And if you do something like that, then when you start to when you start to put the next set of blocks over and maybe you can see that from this if you lay them in this direction now you're going to get a secondary kind of design um, so you're going to get a secondary design with these because they're going to create um, corners here too blocks here so you'd have large blocks here and then you would have smaller blocks here so there would be a lot of options there as far as what what you could create. So those are some of the options for the disappearing nine patch. So I had a, a lot of fun looking up some of the variations and seeing what people were doing. Teresa Down Under has a YouTube channel. She's got several videos on this. If you put in disappearing four patch or disappearing nine patch there's oodles and oodles of variations to these blocks. Um, comment if you've already created disappearing four patch and disappearing nine patch um, quilts and what your thoughts were on it. If you have other variations than the ones that we've talked about today. I hope that uh, you'll try some of these blocks and see what kind of um, configurations that you come up with. I'd love to see the pictures if you do that. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're one of the people that's already subscribed to the channel, thank you for doing that. I so appreciate it. It has been such an awesome ride to start the channel so that I could share with you the things that I'm working on. So